My name is Tim. I have a LS and was also a victim of the housing market. He was making popovers one day and he just said, that's it. We have a band and this is our name. His first recording project was called Little Brother. And Little Brother started with him in his dorm room. Uh, one night, he wrote a song about one of our friends. It was Jesse Blacklow's 22nd birthday, but he was still a virgin. He was convinced it was because his boyish appearance, and he would not let it go. So for his birthday, I borrowed my friend Jeff's cassette tape for a track and wrote and recorded my first poppy tune. Its sole purpose was to embarrass him. Uh, it was about my um, uh, sexual prowess, lack thereof at the time, um, my uh, general horny state of mind of being 22 and looking like I was 13. <laughs> I think he was worried that I was going to be offended. And then I just started laughing and I said, this is hilarious, this is awesome. So sleep with me, I'm 22 and not 13 and I have got I can't believe I wrote a song that filthy, but that was my pop genesis. A lot of the songs are brutally honest, and that's one of the, my favorite things about Tim's music and songwriting is, is that he's he's so bluntly honest that it's uncomfortable and but uncomfortably amusing and beautiful at the same time. Waiting for that special girl who's pretty like a fairy, my hero that will rescue me and really pop my cherry. Originally, Little Brother was, was Tim and a cape and a, a wife beater with a big L on the front and him going around to parties at Guilford College with his tape deck and his one-man show. With Little Brother, the cool thing there was there was no expectations of the kinds of songs or the genre we were writing. It was just, uh, let's write a really funny song or crazy weird song. Little Brother was an endearing persona. I always sped my vocals up to sound like a kid. It was a way to get to past the fact that I hated my voice. But the next few years I gained confidence in writing pop, not having to project a punk rock image. It was nice to admit my love for Janet Jackson and not be ironic. About the mid-decade, after the band was done and I wasn't working any music, I had my pop revelation when I really gave pet sounds by the Beach Boys a listen. Yes cliche but true. And with the help of my Mac, writing and recording began again. For me, Tim was always a pop guy, you know, and, and he played in his friends' bands, but but uh, for him, I, I you know, you knew anything he was going to write was, was going to be, was going to be, uh, uh, was pure pop. Yoga in the morning was the catalyst for the popovers. Once that was written, I realized that something was missing. So I went downstairs and grabbed Katie to put some vocals on it. He said, come upstairs, I want you to sing on this. Come upstairs, I want you to sing on this. And then we would just work on these home recording projects. A uh, damn, she really made that song perfect. From then on out, we became the popovers. Probably some of the most brilliant pop songs that I'd ever heard or that anyone that I knew personally had ever written. Well, I mean, he, he's a, a songwriter extraordinaire. I mean, he's just, he, he can crank them out. I mean, he's, he's, he's witty and he's funny and he's like, he, he, loves, he loves the quick pop song and he's, he's, you know, he's mastered it. Just being on tour with Tim and hearing some of his compositions that he wrote later, um, it really showed me the depth of, of you know, what he liked to listen to, what he liked to create. It, it wasn't just um, one or two types of music, it was, you know, 10 or 12 types of music. It was the Thanksgiving weekend of 2007, and Devender and Tim and I drove down to Florida for the weekend, and I loaded up my iPod with the Savage Love podcast, which had, had not been going for very long at that point. Um, 
And I, you know, I just wanted to listen to a couple of episodes, but I, we got two or three episodes in, and 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 Tim would pipe up in the back. Can you play another one? When we got back home, he said, "You know, that is a great show, but their theme music sucks." He said, "We should do a theme song." He's witty and he's personal. Advice is universal for the gay or straight or in between. We had put out a call that we needed new uh, theme music for the show because we were using something canned that was ridiculous and bad, and we knew that we needed something um, unique to the show. And we got dozens of entries, dozens of them. So I listened to it sort of ready to roll my eyes, and whoa. <laughs> like right away I knew, oh my God, this is it. It was so perfect. Just the way that it worked um, to segue into Dan talking, immediately I, I sort of ran to Dan and said, this is it. And he agreed right away, too. It was Valentine's Day week, and I was sick, home from work, and I downloaded the podcast, and I turned it on, you know, I started it, and it was, you're listening to a Stranger podcast, www.thestranger.com. And then our theme song pops up. I screamed like a 12-year-old girl at a New Kids on the Block concert. I was jumping up and down the bed and just, I, I couldn't believe it because it was me and Tim singing together and then Dan Savage's voice came on. He just gave it to us out of the kindness of his heart. There was, there was no exchange of anything except he just dumped this wonderful present at our doorstep and, and here we are years later still using it and we really appreciate it. Over the next year or so, we had enough for the album, but I never planned on doing anything with it, especially after diagnosis. So, it sat around for a year until Katie found an unfinished track. I believe the first song we recorded was sometime around 2006 or 2007, and mastering was in January of 2011. We collected the tracks, got it mastered, and all of a sudden, an album appeared. Tim just sent me an email that said, Hey, will you do some art for the Popovers record? Um, how about think about Run DMC doing a Saturday morning cartoon and maybe mixing it up with Break It To Electric Boogaloo? What do you think? <laughs> and I was like, yes! <laughs> I decided to just give it away. God, I hope people like it. Actually, fuck it. Download it. It's awesome. Tim has always been so excited to share his music. I'm so, so super hyped to listen to it, and I hope that millions of people listen to this album because it's fantastic. In his first effort, he hit it out of the park, you know, and so, like, I I'm sad that that's not going to be, you know, carried on. I mean, I, I just, you know, I wish there was more. Really, it's just a glimmer of what he could really be capable of. It's just like, when you listen to this, you can only imagine if he, if he had ever had access to like a full professional studio and, and, you know, all the downtime in the world, like, who knows what the guy, I mean, he, he could, it could have easily been the, the, the next American blur in the blink of an eye. I feel like this record is a very appropriate send-off. There's so much love that's been put into it by everyone that's worked on it, and it's just genius. <laughs> when I listen to these songs, it's like, you know, they're fun and they're amazing, and, and I am so unselfconscious about playing them for anyone, sharing them with people, and wanting to listen to them. And now, it's such a gift because it's where Tim and I are gonna live together forever. So, um, you know, I, I hang out with him now and I can't hear him talk, and I can't, you know, hear him, like his face doesn't move anymore. And, you know, he doesn't breathe on his own, but it constantly gives me the, the reminder of, of the gift of not waiting. I'm so glad that even on days when I was feeling, you know, like my voice just was kind of scratchy or, you know, I just wasn't really feeling like going upstairs. I wasn't in the mood to go upstairs and sing or, or whatever it was. I'm so glad that I did it. I can listen, I can go back and listen to these and have these wonderful memories of all of the amazing times that I had with him and not just being bogged down or, or not being overwhelmed with the um, 
with the sad stuff that seems to be so overwhelming now. Day has come, moving on, now that your ball and chain is gone, dearest friend, we're so proud of you.